So apparently FGO didn't think that Lost Belt 6 was hard enough, so they're like, you know what? What if we just threw Grand Nero Festival at the JP server right now, where we basically take Nero Fest 1 and Nero Fest 2, slam them together and just say, good luck, new players. Now, thankfully, we have a ton of new good servants that are in here in the game, and like, there's been, you know, two other of these kind of like challenge festival type uh, deals going on uh, since the original Nero Fest, or actually, Technically, I think there's been three because Gilfest had a rerun. So we've had numerous harder quests come around. And I think the like original Nero quest Nero Quest, Nero Fest should be a lot easier, especially just because of the quality of serving we have now. The 2017 one might still be a little hard for some people, because that's when we had break bars. But I mean, this video is basically just going to be a guide for all of the different fights and kind of some strategies for what you should employ and how you should win in some of these fights. I mean, at the end of the day, if you got like Castoria, you got Scotty, you got like your Merlins, you have the premium supports, you should be able to just toast a lot of these fights because it was really around Gilfest when I think things started to get really hard, in my opinion. The, the original exhibition, I think, is fair. It's a nice kind of cute challenge, but it's nothing too insane. There's some in here that are interesting but they're not like oh man i'm gonna really bust a nerve here trying to get through this fight like you can get through it it might be a bit more stressful but as long as you know the strategy going in you should be fine so i mean before we begin if you enjoy fgo content what are you doing i upload these videos every single day we're on the daily fgo grind and all i ask for in return is a like on the video and a subscribe to the channel but if you're feeling extra feisty you can click that join button to become a channel member now let's go ahead and talk about uh this whole preliminary not the preliminary the challenge quest now by the way hold on before we start with that i will say farm the lottery just get to the final quest you know farm the lottery all day every day it has exp cards it'll have mana prisms friend points qp all the basic stuff that you need to kind of buff up your servants i mean everybody wants exp cards you always got servants you want to level up everybody's in qp hell so everybody needs that i mean friend points if you're doing ce bombs and stuff like that you're trying to get your np5 on gramine you you're gonna need those mana prism's always good to just stock up on those you can buy the new ce's they throw in there but you know that's just my little uh, psa to go ahead and farm the lottery if there's something you really need in the event shop then you know maybe go farm that real quick but really you should just be hitting the lottery all day every day now with that being said, let's talk about uh, the first Nero Fest, right? First, let's go ahead and talk about this. So first quest is this Heracles quest. Basically, he has all 11 uh, lives. That's his whole gimmick. And he revives with 50% HP every single time. It's actually not all that difficult because you can kill up to three lives a turn. So let's say you have someone like Jalter, right? And her first card is a Buster Crit. She kills one life. Then she fires her NP, that's the second life, and then the third card, and then the extra attack killed the third life, right? You just took out three lives in a turn, and you can really melt this dude's HP very, very quickly. It's really not all that difficult. Just bring somebody that you can do, like, pretty powerful, like, Brave Chains with, and you should be fine. The second quest is the Coup and the Skaha quest. The main gimmick is that you want to kill them at the exact same time. This can be a little annoying because one, Skahawk has 200k more HP than Coup, and you know, two, Ku is known for being a survivability servant. He has like the triple dodge. He has guts. Skahawk can also dodge. So I recommend just bringing like a Pierce Evasion or Pierce Invincibility, like CE. Maybe just bring a servant that already has that. Um, but I find just bringing the CE gives you a bit more, uh, what is it called? Fluidity with your team comps. Uh, like for instance, I just brought Artoria because she's just big monkey strong, right? I just brought her with like a Pierce Evasion CE, the, um, the 50% charge, the Altera one from the first uh, Christmas event. I forget what it's called, but it gives you Pierce of Invincibility and 50% starting gauge. Like, I think that's pretty good. That way you can kind of just keep chomping away at both of them, despite, you know, all the buffs that they put on each other. If you kill one before the other, though, one of them will go like Super Saiyan Blue, Kaioken times a million, and they will mess your life up. Like, Skahawk will start insta-killing people. You know, she'll get really insane. Like, make sure you kill the both of them at the same time. I cannot stress rest that enough otherwise you will be in for a rough time then we have the third quest which is really like, literally just built for you bringing medea like because all of these hassans have an on death buff meaning when they die they debuff your party but medea with her np she stabs removes their buffs and then kills them so medea is tailor-made to take out this challenge quest 
And you should have Medea. Like, if you don't have Medea, go roll the friend point. Gotcha, right? Go farm some of these. Go farm some friend points, right, from the lotto. Go get yourself, like, an NP1 Medea and just go to town. Because even at NP1, if you can bring, like, a friend Castoria and then just anybody else to give Medea any sorts of buffs, you know, Caskill, Landling, I don't know, Mozart, just literally anyone to help Medea out just a little bit, you'll be cruising through this fight. Maybe even just bring a friend Medea at that point. But then uh, we have the Siegfried fight, which, I mean, the whole gimmick is that he has massive big boy defense. So the whole thing that you want to do is bring someone that has pierced defense, which thankfully we have an AOE archer that pierces defense in Emiya. So just bring Emiya, you know, spam unlimited blade works and just kill Siegfried in like 2.5 seconds. Really not all that difficult. If you don't have Emiya, bring a friend Emiya, right? It's not too hard. Or just slap on a pierce, you know, defense CE, something like that along those lines. We've been getting a lot more of those lately. You know, I point those out in some of the event guides. So just go slap up one of those, one of your AOE archers and just kill that Siegfried pretty easily. The Maeve fight, this was really hard when it first came out because the main strategy was to use Jack because Jack did big single target damage and had an anti-female niche. But what the whole gimmick with Maeve right here is that she has insane buffs, right? And basically as you kill these Celtic soldiers, you remove the buffs off of Maeve and the quick one you'll notice is the last one. So they didn't want you to just be able to bring Jack and just slap up Maeve real quick. So essentially kill some of the soldiers, get the buffs off Maeve and then kill her however you want. Do you want to use Kama? Do you want to use King Hassan? Do you want to try using 100 personas with Castoria? Really just bring whatever you want. They're trying to trip you up because they bring like, oh, there's two casters and writers. That means if you bring an assassin, they're going to be in danger. But OK, then just bring an alter ego. Like if that really concerns you, just bring like Okita alter or something and just blow them up. Like you should be absolutely fine. Just remember to kill the side goons and, you know, not all that hard. Uh, this fight, this is the Gilgamesh fight. Basically, this okay, this is kind of annoying. I see why they did it. Because you fight through these first two waves and you're building up your NP trying to charge up. And then the first thing that Gilgamesh does is he just reduces your NP to zero. Like he drains all of your NP. So maybe just bring like double Scotty, Parvati, clear out these two, sub her out for like a Skahawk, and then just blow up Gilgamesh in like two hits, right? You know, I guess that's what they're trying to do. But I mean, he doesn't drain the back line, so it's whatever, right? So not all that hard. The only thing I want you to watch out for, they don't list it here, but he raises his attack every single turn. Please don't remove his attack buff because then he gets a lot stronger. Just kill Gilgamesh, just blow him up. You know, we got plenty of powerful single target lances that you could bring. Skahawk's probably gonna be one of the best ones because she has an anti-divine niche and she already hits really hard. But you know, if you got like Kage Tora from the Guda Guda 4 event or the rerun, you know, you should just be in business to blow this dude up. You could also bring Karn and probably get away with it because of his anti-divine buff. But then we have the final, the Nero one, you know, basically kill Nero last. Otherwise, Nero gets like really, really strong. You know, if you or she buffs everybody else with guts and it can just get really annoying. Uh, there's specific. Yeah, look, there's even like <laughs> order when you have Kualtar because I was the strategy to kill it is that people like you could just bring a friend Kualtar and solo this. Um, just here's the order. Just kill them in that order it's not all that difficult right like it, it's kind of a fun quest if you, you didn't know about all the niche you're like oh man i gotta figure out how i kill it but again these events are so old that we've had these order kills for such a long time now we have the other challenge quest right and this can get a little a little annoying spartacus basically has big fat thick juicy heels so if you're not really dpsing super hard you're not really gonna get through his heels but again we have like jolter and stuff so just blow him up like honestly that's what, like just blow him up i mean he, that, that's all i can really say he's a berserker bring anyone that's going to do a lot of damage i'll probably just bring jolter but you can bring whoever you want you want to bring ashvatamin you want to bring i don't know do you want to bring emia alter <laughs> just bring someone that you like that does big damage and out dps this guy we have three main supports for the card types we have merlin skahawk and uh Castoria, so just bring one of them with one of your favorite single target servants and blow them up, right? Not all that difficult. This is the Suzuka Gozen fight. This one can be a little annoying because she cycles having these uh, huge reductions in the type of damage she takes from certain card types. So you're kind of doing an RNG battle here. This is what it mainly revolves around. You're just kind of like, okay, did I bring, let's say I brought Tomoe Gozen, right? And then she just keeps getting the anti-buster ones and I really can't do any damage, right? So like, 
it's kind of annoying, but you have a special damage CE, so whenever you um, you get to a card type where you can do a lot of damage, you can super punish uh, Suzuka for that. So really, just be patient, try to wait out. I mean, you might even try a strategy where you bring like two DPSs. So let's say you bring like Emiya Alter and Tomoe Gozen, right? That way you have someone that can do big buster damage and someone that can do big arts damage, right? You can maybe do something like that because she doesn't have the biggest of HP. So like you should be able to take her out in like one single target uh, NP as long as you have the damage CE max limit broken. So not all that hard. Arash is basically a survivability fight. I mean, you can try to get through all five mil of his HP, but basically he's going to have some guts. And then after he fires his fifth Stella, you win the battle. The probably the biggest strategy is doing max defense or bringing like, you know, uh, someone like Waver um what's his name bedivere and then like mash that's like a pretty popular set oh no not bet not bedivere because bedivere is a saber but you know what i'm saying just bringing big fat defense well actually it really doesn't matter if you have max defense what class they are because you have 100 percent defense and you take no damage uh because he has pierce invincibility you're not getting around the np but you know the funny thing is nowadays we have castoria so that way we you know can get around that with solemn defense it's really not all that hard uh, yeah, they also suggest bringing people with, like, guts or whatever, but, I mean, just, whatever. Like, who cares, bro? <laughs> who cares? Um, this is a Karna and Arjuna fight. Basically, just kill Karna, then kill Arjuna. Otherwise, Arjuna gets annoying buffs. I mean, it's, it's not all that hard. They're divine. We have plenty of anti-divine characters. Just kill them, bro. Like, come on. Like, it's not all that hard. That, that's, this is really the only advice I can give for this one. You can actually probably just bring Karna for this fight. Well... No, if you bring Karna for this fight, you'll actually kill Arjuna too quickly. But <laughs> you guys see what I'm saying? We have so many anti-divine characters. Just bring them, kill Karna, kill Arjuna, be done with it. Not all that difficult. I, I know I'm kind of glossing over some of these. Um, I'm just like, it's not all that hard because it our servants are just so powerful. And like these gimmicks were hard based on the time. But with all of the crazy servants we have nowadays, this really shouldn't be all that hard. This is the Da Vinci fight. Whenever you kill one of these enemies, they all have unique buffs that they drop. So basically, just kill all the enemies and then kill Da Vinci last. Otherwise, Da Vinci gives crazy buffs to everybody, and basically means that you can't <laughs> you can't kill them it's because they'll have 99% defense. So make sure you just kill everybody, kill Da Vinci, go on with your life. This is the Hassan fight that everybody was like, "Oh my goodness, this Hassan fight is so hard." Basically, you have to wait for Hassan to start killing the other uh, different Hassans that spawn around him. As he kills them, he removes these buffs on him. Once he loses like 10 or so buffs though, then he's like pretty easy to kill. He's kind of squishy. So you just kill him. You know what I'm saying? Just go and kill him. And then we have another like, uh, we have another rerun of the original Nero fight. You know, here's the order that you can do, you know, just kill him in that order. And it's not all that difficult. So yeah, I mean, this one should be really easy. You might just like, maybe you'll struggle with Suzuka because you get bad RNG. You know, maybe maybe you're a newer account and you can't out DPS is healing, like Spartacus is healing, but like, come on, boys. Like, it shouldn't be all that hard. If you need extra help, you can come in the Discord. Like, me and other people will definitely help you out. If you need to add people, there's people in the Discord that can add you and, you know, help you out. Like, say you don't have Emia, so you're, you're really struggling with Siegfried. It really shouldn't be all that difficult, though. So, you know, let me know if there's any questions or anything you guys have, like any comments down below, you know, and be like, oh, I really don't get how am I supposed to get past this Gilgamesh fight? You know, me and other people will definitely try our best to help you out. But with that being said, Zeus is bulling outside with that thunder. I think that's my cue to go. So with that being said, you guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace. Late, guys.